Hello, Roger. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hey, there you go. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Which is a. Should I call you Andreas? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You, you can call me that. Do you uh, do Roger you just go by Roger? Or? Yeah, Roger is fine. Okay, yeah. Well, perfect. I I'm just want to make you awake so early on a Sunday. You know. What's that? Sorry. I'm sorry I made you wake so early on a Sunday. It's already, it's what, 9 o'clock there? Oh, for, for me, it's 10.30 in the morning, so it's quite oh, fine. Oh, 10.30. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite fine. I was up quite a bit earlier, <laughs> so it's okay. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to start by saying that I was watching some of your videos, and I'm very impressed that uh, you're a musician yourself. I, I have Thank tremendous <laughs> respect for anyone that creates and actually learns an instrument, especially the piano. That's actually really cool. And I just oh. wanted to express my ad admiration in, in, in that topic. Oh, thank you. That's that's actually really nice of you. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, no, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's what I grew up doing. And, I mean, animal rights and, like, veganism is, like, a... Uh, it's something that's emerged in my life, but yeah, I, I grew up playing music, yeah. so that's kind of why. Absolutely, absolutely. yeah. So uh, you would call your, yourself a vegan then, yes? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I think we might have different ideas of what being vegan means. Like, what when you say okay. when you say vegan, like, what do you mean when you say that? I mean that uh, I use the definition of the vegan society to cause uh, the least amount of harm uh, to non-human animals. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually... Would you... Yeah. Yeah, no, I... I, I don't really... I don't subscribe to that, that definition specifically. Um, I kind of... Okay. Could, because... Um, well, I've heard enough people criticize it to kind of convince me that it has some uh, implications that don't, it don't, they don't sit with me, like my values in a way. So, um, like, for example, kind of the, yes. the premise of, you know, just being like about animals, it kind of implies that it's like animalness that is morally concerning you know, to not exploit, but that would imply that some sort of non-animal being that can still suffer is just totally vegan to exploit, which it doesn't make sense to me to imply that. So like, imagine like sentient plants, yeah. they're not animals and they can suffer just as animals do. But because the vegan society definition doesn't include non-animal beings like in the definition it implies that it's vegan yeah. to like mass farm sentient plants you know and that wouldn't okay. sit right with me so that's kind of why i reject it because Our, it, yeah it, it kind of doesn't encompass Our, yeah it doesn't encompass my like i i i, I concern like even the potential for artificial intelligence to become sentient like i would concern ai under veganism but the vegan society doesn't encompass that you yeah. would consider AI, uh, if proven to have pain receptors, for example, or just consciousness in general? Yeah, if, if, if AI was proven to have their own um, subjective experiences um, and their own kind of, yeah, their own like perception of the world, basically, like kind of what it, whatever it means to be a conscious being. Right. I would consider it morally important to like consider where they're coming from in terms of how we like we might use AI for something. But if it goes against, you know, well, I would want to give AI rights if if they are sentient, basically. This is very interesting. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions about it before we go into the MTT? Yeah, no, that's that's fine. Yeah, sure. Yeah, would that be okay with you? Perfect. Mm -hmm. So. 
uh, regarding AI, for example, I, I love futuristic uh, things, you know, Black Mirror and all those kind of series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like regarding AI, what if you would program an AI that is itself conscious, but mm -hmm. you would program it in such a way that it would uh, be happy, I guess, being exploited? Would that be against your moral judgment? Um, well, because you, you're the one programming it to enjoy it. It's kind of fucked up, I know. Yeah, I, I might, um, like, in, in, like, a consequential sense, like, they're not actually particularly suffering as a result. I would still maybe consider it, a, 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 like, kind of exploitive to, to go into that <laughs> situation with that in mind, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> I, imagine you could, like, genetically manipulate a, a human to kind of do whatever yeah. you want, it, want them to do. And they might be happy doing it, but the fact that you kind of manipulated them to do that is kind of, it's it doesn't, powerful. it rubs me the wrong way. So I think I would still, yeah. um, yeah. I would still be against that. Yeah. Okay. For me, it, it's easy. To, it's like, um, if you, uh, for me, I find it's easy to, well, easier to um, resolve like dilemmas, like moral gray areas, okay. if you can put yourself or put a human in that situation, like assuming like you believe in like human rights and stuff, which, which I do. So yes, 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 yes. it's, it's easier to be like, no, of course I wouldn't have that happen to a human. So then mm. it, it becomes easier to see like, why would it be okay in this other situation and kind of go from there. But someone can go into like a very ridiculous point, which is that you wouldn't really be able to do anything. You wouldn't even be able to like, cast a stone into a river because you don't want to cast a human into a river, you know? So, oh, okay, and, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With that. I mean? So, I, mm. I, I, there has to be some sort of point where that does not apply. Certainly. I, I think for me, the yeah. point where that doesn't apply is if the, you know, the, the thing being thrown into a river, it doesn't give a shit. Like, it, it doesn't feel anything. And there's no like subject to be thrown into the river at all. Like a rock, you know, <laughs> I mean, it could be tomorrow that rocks somehow become sentient, I guess. But like, that would, first of all, like that would go against all of our inhibitions, like about rocks, but it would also just, I mean, we have a good reason to think that rocks will never have the capacity to, to be like, oh fuck, I don't want to be thrown into a river. Like they just, yeah. you know, the biology or whatever, just whatever they are, we just know there's no, there's no subject that can be thrown into a river when you throw a rock. But that, that's kind of where I draw the line. Yeah. So like, okay. um, you, there's yeah. There's a line between object and subject. hundred percent. Yeah. I pretty much, I draw that line with, uh, with sentience. We agree with that, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. With sentience. Sentience is for you the, the barrier. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, would you describe, or can you put it into words? Um, okay, someone asks you, uh, you're a vegan, yes? Mm -hmm. What uh, What does that mean? So, for can me... You make it into a sentence? Yeah, sure, sure. So, oh, for me, uh, I wanna, being... I don't want to limit you, so it doesn't have to be a sentence, but yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's cool. So, if I would have described being vegan, yes. I would basically say it kind of, um, it's, it's one of those things I I've come to realize, like just as I've been like identified as vegan for a few years now, the more you, you talk to yes, people yes. who call themselves vegan, there's kind of, um, there's a core principle that everyone aligns with, I think. And then there's the nuances around how you apply that principle. So basically yes. the idea of veganism is to, uh, expand your, your moral scope to more than just humans, basically, or specific, yeah. specific animals. Right. So, okay. I mean, um, I, I take a, a rights approach. So like, I believe that, um, animals should be given basic rights that, um, can be applied to them. Like, I don't know, the right to, to just live in freedom and not, you know, be stabbed in the throat.
to become a burger. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. and, and it's kind of a thing of, we have these universal human rights um, that we don't even apply equally between humans because, I mean, we might grant certain humans a specific right, but they might not ever be able to actually apply them, which isn't a bad or good thing. It's just like down to their their own abilities. You know what I mean? So like a baby can't vote, but we might we might say they have the right to vote because I don't know they're a worthy being of having that right. But in practice, they don't vote, and that's okay. So like a chicken, obviously, you know, like. You can ask some people, they might say, a chicken should have the right to vote. But, I mean, obviously, in, pra in practice, it's not a bad thing that they yeah. wouldn't vote because it's, it's beyond their ability anyway. So, it, it's basically an application yeah. of human rights to animals where applicable. And I, I expand that to any sentient being, like, because of the animalness that I don't, I don't track just animalness. So, yeah, yeah so that's kind of how I describe it. For, like, with a the possibility of, you know, like you said, sentient plants or even, you know, one day uh, extraterrestrial beings. Yeah, 100%. Like, animals. yeah, like, I've, I've thought enough about that. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, there's enough, like, stories and, you know, shit that, like, even just any sci-fi story that, like, it would mean it would be vegan to just mass murder, like, an alien because they're not animals. Like it, it just doesn't sit right. <laughs> doesn't sit right with me. So yeah, basically mm -hmm. veganism for me is, um, whatever moral, like however you frame morality to be it, that that's kind of what I think is really good about it as well is that it's not, it's not exclusive to if you're, you know, if you think in utilitarian terms or in like deontology, these kind of different normative like ethics, right? You can pretty much apply vegan principles to any normative ethics you have. The point is just to expand whatever considerations you have morally to pretty much any sentient being where applicable. That That's the principle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to have to ask you to have a bit of patience with me because mm -hmm. um, words like tautology or utilitarianism, utilitarianism, Mm -hmm. um, is something that I'm not familiar with. Unfortunately, I am, you know, I'm not a very big philosopher or anything. Mm, yeah, no, um, that's okay. The way I speak <laughs> on my videos, I'm, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know big words, right? That's, so if yeah. we, if we ever go into this, I'm gonna have to ask you to have a, a second while I research and see what it, what you mean by that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that that's um, totally fine. I mean, just. I mean, yeah. I'm not like a, I'm not good at philosophy or anything myself, but, um, I just, okay. I've kind of just picked up these terms. I don't know. Uh, depending on where you go, like in the vegan community, there's lots of, yeah. um, people that are really deep into, um, these kinds of terminologies and then in other spaces, they don't use it okay. as much. So I've, I've just kind of come across it enough to, to understand where it applies. To be able but, yeah. To use it. yeah. I mean. I, I'm there with you. It's just if we go into it, I'll I'll have to ask uh, for a second just so I can expand my knowledge in regards to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, regarding NTT, I believe I think it was ask yourself that simplified in a, such a term where. Uh, I don't want to misquote him, but I think it was something on, mm. on the lines of there's a world where a human is killed and there's a world where a cow is killed. Mm. And then there's a bunch of worlds in between, right? Uh, at what point, yeah. which world is morally per permissible? Basically, name the trait, right? At what mm. point in the transformation of the human to a cow, I believe, would I be okay in killing the cow and not the human, right? Uh, uh, yeah, the, I guess, yeah. See, yeah. Would you agree with that uh, description or is it too basic or? Well, it is definitely, that's definitely one way to, to kind of frame the idea. Cause I've heard multiple mm -hmm. different frames. Like, um, would you, would you tell me one that you prefer to use? Well, I've, I've actually thought about a way to think about it recently. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, go for it. do you play like Skyrim yeah, or like, um, 
Do you play many games? I play, I, I play some games. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a few. Uh, uh, RuneScape. I played mm -hmm. <laughs> old style Counter Strike, uh, League of Legends. Um, yeah. I never played Skyrim, unfortunately. Okay. Um, well, I, I was just thinking World about. Warcraft, oh yeah, yeah. Starcraft. Yeah. I I was just thinking goal. about um. Able to. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, I was just thinking about the the idea of creating a character, right? And in some in some games, you can even like you can customize the history of the character, and kind of sure. you can build into the, the character like their own story, right? So, I mean, I imagine like you have like a a player creator, right? And you have these different sliders maybe to describe their physical traits. And then you have, you can like change anything you want about them contextually. Like you can say, oh, they're from this country or they, they are whatever yeah. in this society, that kind of thing. And then yeah. the question is, you know, say there's uh, a chicken uh, in one character creation moment and they have all these different sliders and these different um, contextual kind of traits applied to them. And then there's a human. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. have all these other traits applied to them. Like uh, they have a certain height on the slider and a certain, you know, yeah. just all these physical things. And then there's context, context like the, or they were born as a human and, and, and all this kind of stuff. I, I like to imagine. And there's like a, yeah. Yeah. Go on, go on, go on. I'm sorry. So I was just thinking like, you can change the sliders as you want. And we can just imagine any kind of slider really to change the physical traits yeah. and then like we can make up anything you want in the like contextual traits like I see it. Yeah, what I what see what it. traits are you know what are the differences between the two kind of sets of characters right that if they were cancelled yeah. out would make yeah in this case the chicken is okay to to kill and eat right and the human is not yeah. what differences yeah. would have to be cancelled out in those traits like applied to these people um in the human case to then make it okay to kill and eat exactly. that that that's kind of the that's a framing i like to think yeah of. That, that's that's a, actually a much better framing i would say that I, I i can see that exact game mechanic in my mind yeah. <laughs> where uh, you know the the sliders turn you taller shorter stronger fatter and even mm. like yeah exactly charisma, right? <laughs> yeah so i guess technically you could make you could make one that even turns you into certain animals right so yeah like in, in like skyrim you can just change the you can just change your race like in one option that yeah. that, that just changes the species I, I so love that analogy, man. I, yes I love it, I love it. <laughs> um, but uh, that's the thing did you before i go on did you watch my video on name the traits i did yeah i uh you, you did i did yeah so, yeah so my problem with name the trait and in this case with your sliders um is that you can apply that to anything in in the, my case i use the sheep of Theseus, right where mm. at some point you don't know if it's a ship anymore or you don't know at what point of replacing each of these traits it's mm. a ship or in the case of our, on our example at what point in the slider does your uh, character stop being human and start being uh, an animal, right? Mm. And the thing about this is that it's ridiculous because we know that humans exist. We know mm. that other things exist that are not human. Mm. In your slider example, it's the perfect uh, uh, analogy in my view because it exactly suffers from the same core uh, problem that the sheep of Theseus suffers. Mm -hmm. It's an impossible question to answer because the question itself constrains you into the thinking of you either accept that there are no humans and there are no animals or you accept that there are both and mm -hmm. you have to put yourself a random, albeit possibly random, point where one is human and one is no longer human. And it's, for me, at that point, however random it is, that it is permissible to have 
human rights or not. That's my problem with the, the trade. That's my problem with these sliders in this case. Because okay. uh, at some point, you know it's not a human. And at some point, mm -hmm. you know it is a human. But mm. you don't know at exactly what point that happened. Mm. But you still agree that humans exist. And you still agree that animals, or other animals, are not humans. Yeah. For me, I will put always a human, no matter which traits that person loses, as long as I consider it a human, I will always consider it infinitely more valuable than any other thing on this search or not. Mm -hmm. I think that's my problem within the trait. Uh, if okay. I explain myself correctly. Yeah, I mean, let me see if I understand you correctly. So, like... Yes. Um, so, you don't... Like, a problem you have with the idea of um, name the trait is that it's not obvious where the line is drawn between, like, a human and then, you know, uh, like, a, an animal. Because and you can definitely yeah. see, like, where it's a human and where it's not. But then, like, the question of name the trait, it kind of makes it... Um, blurry. It makes it blurry, right, right. I guess... Yes. Um, and I understand... Yes, go on, Bob. No, no, you, you, you say something if you wanted, and then yeah, it's fine. Yes, so... And I understand that that's exactly the point of name the trait, is to say, look, maybe there is no difference, and therefore, these other conscious beings should have... Uh, rights. I can see where that argument leads to. But my, in my point of view, and I think every single human on this earth point of view is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. a human will, unless you know them personally, or unless there's some personal uh, moral to it, mm -hmm. if you, if you have a button next to you, kill an animal, non-human animal, or Mm -hmm. kill human you don't know the human's age you don't know anything about the animal you don't know anything about the human but you have to press a button either kill one or the other every single human being will kill the animal for no other reason that at least they're not killing a human that's yeah. the difference i think that we make that is moral and that's why name the trait makes no sense and i would so much more understand uh, veganism from the point of suffering and unnecessary suffering rather than name the traits where you just blur the line between the two because that line might not be clear but there is a line we don't know where it is but there is one mm. yeah i mean I, I i think i understand i think i understand where you're coming from um i would still argue that it's a useful um it can be a useful kind of tool to it, it you can think of it as a way of trying to find where the line like trying to unblur the line as weird and as mm -hmm. arbitrary as it might end up being like i've heard people say in like when in engaging in them the trait i've heard people say um they'll, they'll be asked like what is it you know that's true of a, a given animal that if made true of a human would make it okay to kill and eat them right and I've heard exactly. people say, I've heard people say, um, the brain of a human or the brain of an animal only has like a certain amount of neurons, like say a trillion neurons, but the, a human has more neurons. So then, then the, yeah. the vegan, he said, okay, so if a human had, you know, um, 999 billion neurons, just one less than a trillion would that make it okay to kill and eat them? And I think he ended up yeah. saying, yeah, yeah, that, that's where I draw the line. That's where it's okay to kill I and eat that human. I don't like, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know if, and I, I, there I completely, I think we are on the same page. I think that argument is ridiculous. See, yeah, if right, like. An animal that, yeah, if you would find an animal that has more neurons than humans, then it would be immoral to kill that animal, right? So or, or at least it would yeah i mean if if it was the, the amount of neurons that mattered then a human with less yeah. neurons than an animal would be uh just uh, on the menu and then the the animal yeah. would be protected so that's kind of like it there is no right or wrong answer to name the trait that's how i see it like 
whatever the line is for you is whatever is true to you. And it's just about trying to uncover where that line is. And I think it, it can be ridiculous. Like if you, if you, mm -hmm. so you said, wait, let me just, I'm writing. This yeah. 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 So I can remember. That's fine. Uh, whatever uh, line uh, you determine that it's correct for you. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. Sorry. Whatever. Yeah. Like determine. it's, it's, it's very much like it's trying to um, break down where you personally draw the line. And I mean, everyone has their own, like when you break it down into, you have to consciously think about <laughs> where it, where it is. It, it might be vague, okay. but yeah. I don't know if I can agree with this sentence mm -hmm. though, because we know, because we know that there are certain, uh, uh, world human rights mm -hmm. that okay some people might consider it as non-violation you know in some places slavery is still accepted right mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean that it's correct it's, mm. it's still a bad thing the slavery of humans at least is is in my view a completely immoral thing no matter yeah. who believes that is immoral so i don't know if we can say that whatever line you determine to be true, that's where it is correct. Because some people will even divide human races in categories, right? So mm -hmm. uh, uh, Aryan race is a top race, and then all the others come afterwards, or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe, so, maybe we're coming uh, from different, um, different backgrounds, like in terms of, uh, do you think morality is inherently subjective? Uh, sorry, those are a lot of complicated words. Wait. Is sorry, morality... sorry. Yeah, I'm just uh, asking sorry, like... Just, I'm just... Sorry, sorry. Morality is inherently subjective, meaning mm -hmm. that it doesn't belong to anyone. Well, I would say mm -hmm. what I mean is um, it's relative to everyone. That's how I'd, how I'd frame it. Is morality relative to everyone? I have to say no. There has to be well I think society determines what's moral. Mm. I don't for example, it's I don't think everyone that owned slaves uh back in the day uh was immoral. Maybe they were moral people, they just owned slaves because that's what everybody did. Mm, mm. Was the act of slavery immoral? Yes, 100%. But I don't think those people were being immoral. Does that make any sense? I don't know if, I'm, if I actually agree with what I'm saying, though. Yeah, I mean, I like uh, if you, I mean, haven't thought, like if no one's asked that question or anything, like I, I, don't, uh, I don't blame you for not being sure about the answer because... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure about the Like, so if some people would say that... Uh, morality does not belong to humans, it belongs to a higher being, right? A god or the universe or whatever. Mm. Uh, if, we, if, we, if we put away any uh, theist uh, philosophy, mm. then I would say that morality is what us humans believe it to be, because that's what we act upon it, right? So, for example, uh, we were talking about sentient rocks, right? We were talking, like, today yeah. we say that kicking rocks is neither moral or immoral. It doesn't matter, right? Because it's an unconscious being. Yeah. But in this, uh, it's a bit silly to talk about this, I guess, but I guess just to prove my point. But maybe later in the future, we discover that <clears throat> rocks feel pain. Mm. Were we all immoral? Like, for kicking the rock? Yeah. Um, I, I guess... We weren't... The yeah, we weren't aware of it. We weren't, you know? Mm. So yeah. So, I, I, I have to go with... Morality has to be what we determine to be moral, I guess. Mm. I, I, I would agree. Like I'd probably agree. Society, as a collective society. You know, it doesn't belong to me or to you, but it belongs to all of us as a, yeah. as a group. Yeah, I mean, I guess what, um, like, that makes sense. Like, uh, societally, we end up developing 
kind of morality yeah, in that general really sense. Um, if I can be more specific. Yeah, go, 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 please. Go. Sorry, go, sorry. Because I'm getting, I'm getting lost here. Yeah, no, I, I think I can make it clearer what I'm trying to ask. Like, um, please, please, oh, please when I mean morality is subjective, what I mean by that is I have, me personally, I have a set of moral principles that might sure. very well vary from you. And it, even yeah, if it's yeah, just I'm one sure. yeah. principle that's different, that means that our, our list of morality is subjective. And that can just be extrapolated to everyone. If that makes sense. I see. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. So, like, um, um like whatever okay. list oh, we okay, have. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting what you're getting. Okay. So mm -hmm. yes, morality is subjective, but what's moral, it's not. Is that correct? Um. No. I. I think it just comes down to. It ends up coming down for me. It ends up coming down to how you reflect on how different things, uh, how they reflect to you. Like, um, you know, me, I've, I've reflected on how I think, you know, the morality of, of killing an animal is for food or something. And yes. you might reflect on that too. And we might just come to opposite conclusions about if it's immoral or okay, moral. But, and I mean, that's down to this. But let me state this, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong. But you, mm -hmm. you but you uh, oppose the killing of an animal, not because of the killing, you know, because you know then we would have to discuss which diet causes less killing, mm -hmm. but because one animal right was violated, and therefore it is always wrong, no matter if it brings about any goodness or no matter if it actually killing that animal saves others. Is this correct? Not, not for me personally, but I, I haven't not explained that why. Yeah, I, um, I take, I kind of combine like, I definitely think animals should have rights, um, where applicable, but yes. there's, there's definitely, I think, a point where I would consider it okay to violate those rights if, if there was extreme consequences, um, from not violating those rights in a way, like, um, for example. Um, like I might say every animal has a right to life, right? But I also yes. think we have a right to, um, grow food or something. So yeah, yeah. if in a case where I, I might have a hierarchy of rights, basically, where it might be necessary to violate a lower yeah. level to accommodate yeah. the higher level of, of rights that I think are worth, like, um, yeah, of course, protecting. Uh, I'm opposed of killing humans, but you know, mm. in extreme situations, killing a human, it, it's never good, but it mm. would be less wrong. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's always a violation, but it's it's to yes. protect a higher, like a more important right, basically. Yes. Uh, I want to. I want to also state that, in case it wasn't clear, like I would rather not have to uh, kill anyone, but. Mm -hmm or anything right if you would like i'm i don't i'm not i do not enjoy animal suffering for example i i oppose bullfighting which is very common in my country mm -hmm. um you know what i mean like that's for me it, it makes no sense it's a blood spectacle which i don't agree with right mm. um so i i do oppose unnecessary suffering right i just yeah. feel like uh, an omnivore diet uh, mm -hmm. a diet that is with plants and animals actually brings about less suffering than a pure vegan diet. Uh, and my question to you is, mm -hmm. would you be okay in uh, the killing of eating an animal if it would save two others? Well, if, sorry, if could would, you repeat the question? Not if it would say, so would you be okay with me? Would you say I'm, I'm being moral if I mm -hmm. kill and eat an animal, mm -hmm. if this saves two other animals from death, if two other animals do not die. Yeah, so uh, in principle, I think, I think it would, uh, I would maybe consider that, um, or maybe consider that justified, because you're then protecting the rights of, um, of two others. Yeah, so it's less rights being violated. 
that's kind of how I'm so, tracking it. Okay. Okay. I think we're reaching uh, at least a common ground. Uh, so, for example, uh, I think we both also agree that, you know, killing animals for entertainment, I think it's it's silly, it's stupid, right? Mm. We agree on that. Um, so... Sorry, could you give me a second? <laughs> could you give me a second? My my dog is um. I've got a dog at the door. Yeah, she yeah, wants yeah. to come in. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Come on, come on, Owen. Brilliant. I ended up inviting all of the dogs. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I the one dog was at the door and then the two others followed and <laughs> now they're all just here yeah. so uh, um uh, big, big, big envy. okay so um i think we are stepping a little bit away from the, the traits we are i think we are stepping into suffering mm. uh, i'm okay with that I'll, I'll just i'll just yeah i would just like to uh follow this uh a line at least see where we go and then maybe we go back to the detroit is that okay yeah 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 because i think it will end up it all connects in a way it's just kind of um shifting the focus a bit yeah, i think yeah it's all it's all connected of course but otherwise we'll end up running around in circles i guess and yeah i don't want that no so, i think we're yeah we're on a good track so, i think with um understanding each other awesome. so so we both agree that killing animals for pure entertainment is, is bad right um, yeah, for sure. We both agree that uh, we both agree that if uh, killing and eating an animal would save two others of the same level of consciousness, mm -hmm. then uh, this would be justified mm -hmm. and this would be fine. Well, I, I mean, um, in a vacuum, Do you disagree with that. I think in a vacuum, I would agree. I, I guess. It might need more yeah. context to that to uh, sure. divulge the nuances, uh, right but now, yeah. It's not real world applicable yet. It's like you said, in a vacuum. Just you have the choice of uh, being vegan and two animals die or killing and eating an animal and those two animals survive. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I like I'm picturing like the trolley problem or something, like like would I pull the lever to, uh, you know, save two people or something. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that would that would uh, that would uh, that would uh, connect. Yeah, the troll. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess that's just how I'm picturing well, it. Like, many... um. Yeah. So basically, well. I mean, no, you can you can say how you want, but that's just um, that's just how yeah, I'm I mean, like, imagining trolley, it as well. The thing with the trolley problem is that you deviate the card from. Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay, I see it. So you div you would be deviating you would pull the lever to make sure two animals don't die and you end up killing one and that would be unfortunately but it would be unfortunate but uh, just mm. yeah like in the dilemma that's that's what I'd probably do yeah. yeah yeah so now my question is and this is in the real world is mm -hmm. if I could prove uh, without a shadow of a doubt that eating an omnivore diet causes less uh, animal deaths in total than uh, a purely vegan diet would an omnivore diet be justified um, or do you have uh well, a difference I, between directly killing or uh, plantation killing crop deaths etc yeah i uh i mean i'm imagining a uh I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, why don't you, you can lay it out and I'll, I'll kind of go through yeah. my thought process okay. and, and see if I can go from there. Again, if at some point you just want to go back to the trade, I'm more than happy. Uh, yeah, no, I'm very, um, I'm open to, you can, you can ask me what you mean. Yeah. Um, so my thought process is, is the following. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, producing plants at least right now at this point in time kills a lot of animals either to pesticides or uh, crop protection you know that they kill but unfortunately they kill intentionally and then there's the sure. unintentional deaths such as um, other animals that are killed due to consequences to property so sure. no matter how many it is it's a lot right 
we also know that an animal fed uh, pure uh, crops that were mm -hmm. created to feed those animals, it would elevate the number of deaths and the number of suffering, right? So if we are growing crops to yeah. directly feed animals, to then yeah. feed us, then of course we are increasing the number of deaths. Okay. Yeah, That's yeah for sure. Really agree. It's silly. Okay. But here's the thing. We grow crops mm -hmm. that uh, we use for human food, mm -hmm. and those crops produce waste that could be fed to animals, and those animals could be fed to humans. Therefore, reducing the number of deaths of crop production, because you would have to produce more crops to feed again uh, uh, humans. Would that cause less suffering than a purely vegan diet? Because, for example, if you grow corn, mm -hmm. you grow a stem, leaves, you grow the cob that humans do not and cannot eat. It's even toxic for us, but animals can. So yeah. feeding animals those leftovers would create, even if not a lot of meat, some of some meat that could feed humans without causing another thousands of crop deaths. Mm -hmm. Would that justify it? Um, I or do you see a difference well, in, in morality. Well, I I'd like to ask. Um, oh dear, the dogs are going crazy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Take your time. If you have to go again, <laughs> I think uh, I don't know. They're just getting hyped up about something. It's okay. So I'm just trying. I'm trying to think. Are you suggesting um, that in this in this scenario, yes. the waste the waste produced by the crop production would would that are you saying that would result in crop deaths? So not using the waste product the waste resulted from crop production would make it that we have to produce, again, crops to feed humans when we can use those wastes to feed animals and then those would feed humans. Right. Do, do I make myself clear? Maybe not. So let's say that um, crop production produces 80% uh, human edible fee uh, food Mm -hmm. And twenty percent non-human animal, non-human edible. Sorry. Sure. Uh, those twenty percent would go to wastes, uh, or they could be reused to replant more plants. But unfortunately, replanting okay. more plants would create again a lot of crop deaths. Right. Right. And just by the trophic levels alone you would be able to feed those uh, leftovers, those 20% to animals, like uh, ruminant animals, mm -hmm. or pigs maybe even, I'm not so sure, depends on what it is. This would create more food than not using the waste without creating many more deaths. Yes, it will still create some, but you will have to start the process all over again, meaning that's some lives would be saved. Okay, so, so, in the case of the waste, you could either plant it, replant the waste to become crops again, or you could yeah. feed the waste yeah. to animals and then eat the animals. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, yes. Okay. And, uh, by reusing the crops, you know, not only you would create food, but a bunch of other things such as, you know, manure that would help not using so many uh, inorganic uh, fertilizers, for example. It would create uh, um, a bunch of, you know, cows have millions of uses uh, for medicine and uh, other things. So it wouldn't create just plants, but so much more than food as well. And... I unfortunately cannot prove it. I don't have mm. that, that kind of data, but maybe I will be able to find it uh, one day. Definitely not today. I'm not going to. Yes. Now. That's cool. But if I at some point could prove that feeding these wastes to animals would cause less deaths than crop deaths, would it be moral to eat animals in this case? Mm, let me let me think about that for a second. Um... Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to answer today as well. You know, it, this is this is complicated stuff. So I understand mm, if, mm. if you need to take. Well, I, I'll this give you my question. Yes, 
I'll give you my thoughts, like, just as I'm thinking about it. Um, I think crop crop deaths, um, the, for me, the nuance of it, like, as I'm, like, as it stands now, the nuance is that um, uh, it's a case of, um, I guess it's a thing of, like, drawing the line somewhere, right? I, I wouldn't consider it yeah. murder um, to kill animals to protect crops, but I might consider it murder it to, happens. yeah, I'm, maybe, I'm just saying. And then I will, but I might very well consider it murder to kill animals after having fed them the waste from the crops. So that's, that's a case where I might consider like the, um, yeah, the, the killing might not, might not be equal in that case. Um, yeah. So, uh, I guess I, I don't track just deaths. Um, that's maybe just something I don't track. Okay. Particularly importantly, maybe. Else? So, I guess I'm just trying to think the of like the real. Reality. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of the the real world as well to kind of relate how I actually track yeah, that. Think of, think mm -hmm. So, when we when we you know grow crops, um, when we grow crops, there might very well be animals that have to um, be killed. In, in the for the purpose of protecting the crops so that so that humans yes. can be humans can be fed and also well so that animals can be fed before ultimately being killed right yes. um if if the animals being fed and then killed were removed from the equation which is kind of what mm -hmm. it's like a, a way to, to go in my mind um yes. then there would there would maybe just be the crop deaths um but not only I think would it be so significantly reduced, but then the killing in itself is, I mean, unless a farmer is like going out of their way to swerve into an animal, you know, I would maybe consider that murder. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, but, uh, it's, it's like, uh, mm -hmm. when I talk about crop deaths, I also include the crop defensive agency. They, okay. they literally shoot animals that are trying to eat the crops. So it's like it's it's intentional killing. Yes, they are defending the crops. So I just want to mm -hmm. make sure that you uh, are also accepting those in your uh, not murder. Yeah, point. I I wouldn't I would say defense killing. Um, at the moment, I wouldn't consider it murder to to okay. kill in defense of crops. Although it's still impreferable. Like I'd rather no one get killed. Yeah, in this case, I wouldn't consider it murder. Yeah. So, interesting. Okay. Uh, so, it wouldn't be murder because you are defending your crops. Is this correct? Yeah, because the, like, what is being, like, protected, um, I kind of am tracking it like, we are growing food, right? And I think we have an entitled, like, a, a right to grow food, right? And in this case, an animal is, you know, trying to eat the crops. And as much as they have a right to, to not be killed, we also have, we arguably have more of a right to feed, feed the population or something, which is kind of what, what monoculture is functioning as, is like a way to feed, okay. feed the human population. So like an animal going and trying to eat the crops, that threatens, you know, um, that right to to sustain the population or something so killing that animal to protect our the higher like the higher level right is in that case i wouldn't consider it um unjustified but the difference for me between um protecting the crops and like yeah. there's also predation protection for animals themselves isn't there like um uh, well, I guess because the crops are being fed to the animals, so it's kind of a, a similar thing. But what, what is being protected is like, this is kind of why, this is what I'm tracking, why I'm against um, uh, animal ag in that, in that respect, is that what's being protected is the right to essentially murder animals for food. So 
you got these crops that are fed to animals that are going to be murdered. And then you're okay. defending your right to murder these animals. But in the, like the vegan, just crop, crop agriculture itself, you're protecting the right to just feed people, not to murder people to feed them. You know what I mean? So it's, there's like okay. I see. I see. the right to feed the population does not require also murdering billions of animals in order to feed the population in the vegan in the vegan context but the the like yeah that's kind of how i'm seeing how i'm let seeing try, it. let me try to 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 put this in, in and see if i understood what you said so mm -hmm. imagine that you had two farms one was producing food to feed animals that would be killed mm -hmm. and one was it would be producing food to feed humans right yeah yeah you would be okay with killing the animals that are trying to eat the food for the humans, but you would mm -hmm. not be okay in trying in killing the animals that are trying to eat the foods that would be fed to animals that would be killed. Is this correct? Yeah, I mean, in a sense, I'd say yes, because, because yeah, like I don't consider it justified to protect your right, anyone's right to murder someone, because someone's right to life is above someone's right to murder someone. You know what I mean? But so the farmer. Per but the mm -hmm. farmer producing the food that is going to be fed to the animals that are going to be killed mm -hmm. is not doing the animal killing. He's just producing food that someone is buying. So can he defend his crops or not? I guess maybe in the in the individual like level of the system, maybe the farmer is like, I'm just protecting the crops. But yeah. the system is is built around the systematic murder of animals. And that's kind of why I'm systematically against it. Anyway, uh, even if the farmer, um, I, I mean, let me let me try and uh, let me try and put it in a better way. Yeah, so, like, sorry, I'm, I, I didn't understand when you talked about system. I, I I kind of got lost. I'm sorry. No, no, that's my fault. Um, let me. One of the dogs needs to play with him. Um, <laughs> it's a bit distracting. <laughs> it's um, um, yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> okay, she's she's gone. So, let me think. Um, well, maybe maybe can you like um, can you maybe just ask again like what you were? Uh, yes. So we have two farms. One is producing mm -hmm. uh, food for humans. Yeah. And one is producing food that is going to be fed to animals that are going to be killed to feed humans. Yeah. Uh, in your moral view, it's justified to kill the animals that are trying to eat the food that is going to be directly fed to humans, mm -hmm. but it is not justified for the farmer to defend his crops that are going to be sold to someone else that is going to feed those crops to animals that are going to be killed for the food, for food for humans. Mm. Yeah, In one okay. situation justified to kill the animals in defense of the crops but in the other is not is this your position i'd say i'd probably say yes because um okay yeah because because of how the farmer in the second uh scenario how they fit into the overarching what i mean by like the system is like the whole chain of of production basically like um uh i i think i got it so basically yeah. the farmer should know what he's producing food for and therefore know it's immoral well yeah i mean if the and farmer is like the system. yeah i mean obviously the farmer just has it has their job like not nah, get away from the crops but the fact that he is yeah. protecting the crops which will lead to like He's not protecting it to just feed people. He's protecting it to feed people to then be murdered. So that's why that's like the nuance why I think it's it's wrong. Like imagine imagine a, a that kind of how I put it is like I mean yeah. you have a farm that's just feeding crops to humans and animals might go for that mm -hmm. and you have to protect the crops. And then someone is is running a human farm and they have these human, you know, prisoners that they're going to kill for for meat and they have to be fed the same crops but animals will go for those crops so it's like the killing might be justified with respect to feeding just like 
protecting the crops. You might have a right to that. But the, the underlying ulterior motive is to um, supply the, the functioning in a way of the, of the killing of, of innocent humans. You know what I mean? So uh, maybe I'm not explaining that well. Um, I, I think I'm getting a little lost in my wording. No, but I think I understood what you said. You basically are giving me my example back, but uh, in the second in the second farm, the farmer is creating food that is going to be fed to humans who are being purposely bred mm. into uh, to 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 be slaughtered in this case. And yeah. So yeah, but then you would be not producing food for humans, whether they are going to be killed or not is is it morally justified not to produce food for humans i'm not sure um so in the second scenario to, yeah I'm, I'm thinking in the second scenario because yeah. let's say like the farmer is just growing the humans themselves um yeah. so then like kill them for meat right um yeah but then you, i understand why you would be Opposed to that. I would be opposed to that as well, in this case. Right. Um, oh, okay. Because well, there you go. Maybe we agree on that, um, at least in the human yeah, yeah, case. Yeah. So, yeah, in the human case, for sure, for sure. 100%, yeah, then we are in complete agreement. If the farmer itself, himself is creating the food for his own perverted creation of humans for cannibalism, then, yeah, it would yeah. be crazy. Hang on, give me a second. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. That's <laughs> good. Yeah. Accident big beer, sir. Yeah. Ni no, ni. Don't be a lot, Yeah. Sorry, it's all good. No, good, 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 no worries. Uh, so yeah, um, we definitely agree, determined if it was animals. And I guess we can now relate this to uh, Name the Trains, right? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That, that's actually a good uh, circle back around. Uh, so my question is, <laughs> I guess I'm going to use Name the Trains as well. Like, mm -hmm. what, what if the crop defense of your farm mm. was against like humans would you be okay in murdering them to defend your crops so in the first scenario where the crops will be fed to just humans yeah well i would probably say yeah like if, if a guy is like i'm gonna go eat i'm gonna go steal this farmer's crops but yeah. the crops are you know, it's, like, responsible for feeding, like, you know, the overarching human population or something. Yeah, I think the farmer would have a right to protect those crops in, for the, in the best interest of, you know, the, the greater population. Then, then shouldn't, in your view, this farmer do anything and everything possible not to kill these humans while defending it? Oh, definitely. If, if it can be done yeah. non-lethally, yeah. Yeah. But if, okay, if, so if push comes to shove, I think lethal force would be justified. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So here, no, I, I, I don't think I can, I can really, like, just uh, completely murdering uh, humans. Well, let me think. Mm hmm I think my question is like, okay, if, I, if I'm thinking like in an invasion sense, like I have my property, someone is coming to rob me, right? Yeah. I cannot do anything except for a lethal force. Yeah. I can understand that scenario the first time. Like I've been caught off guards. I, I didn't know this was coming, you know, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. It happened, it happened. I can understand justifying it like that. But if it's a common occurrence, uh, I don't know if I would be able to uh, justify not putting all my effort, 
possible into protecting these crops in a non-lethal non-lethal way. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not what farmers do. You know, they use uh, pesticides and herbicides, and they use uh, uh, growth factors uh, that are uh, uh, mined from the earth that cause incredible devastation. Uh, so your moral position, uh, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, would mm. have to be, oh, I only buy uh, vegan products from farms that have gone above and beyond to protect without lethal force their crops. Would you agree with that statement? Um. Well, I, I think... <clears throat> Like, <laughs> yeah. I would, but I, I just don't think the choice is even there to, to choose that. Um, like, it's a constant push comes to shove. Like, the, just the system that, that is here, um, it just forces, it just makes it so that you can only really choose the, the one where um, okay. lethal force is being used. That's kind of... I mean, if if I could, I would I would grow my own my own crops and not yeah, not yeah. kill any animals. But I can't do that. So like, I, I don't think I, I don't know if you ever tried to grow crops. Not killing any animals is, is impossible. At some point, there will be someone trying to get into your crops. You know, right? I mean, maybe that's just the axiom. You know, that's just like the the bare minimum assumption to be made. You know, um, okay. like okay. yeah. I, I, I like <laughs> exactly like what you said. It, it is definitely, I agree. Like it, it would be impossible to not kill. I mean, to not, you know, kill any animal for, for crop protection. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of think not, not to say that it's like justified to mass, like, you know, um, my point is, I guess the scale of the crop production that kind of puts it in effect. Like it, it, it makes it more proportionate in a way for me. Like, um, yeah. um, in your invasion hypothetical, were you imagining that I was just feeding myself or was I feeding like the entire population of, of like um, humans or something? I'm guessing not, not the entire population. Well, yeah, I guess the entire population, if we're going to go there, we will be talking about all the farms, right? Not just one. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I'm imagining that uh, you would be feeding, you know, an entire population, yes. But in the human case, mm. you wouldn't be killing a few to save many, right? You would be killing many to save many. Uh, maybe you would be, maybe you probably would be killing more humans, mm. like in the in the crop death scenario. Way more animals are killed than humans you feed, and this is yearly. If you, I'm not sure if you account insects. I don't think human uh, usually uh, vegans care about insect deaths due to insecticides. But I'm talking about like birds, deers, uh, squirrels, and mice. You know, all of these things die either by pesticide or by uh, shooting while protecting mm -hmm. crops. And the killings are. I don't want to say trillions, but billions for sure every year. Uh, if like just the the runoff of these insecticides to rivers, kill fish, kill birds, kill a bunch of animals that would have a conscience. So again, I cannot prove you with a hundred percent certainty, but I can probably find somewhere where I can find that a number of deaths caused by plantation for human consumption is much much higher than human life that you save if this is true mm. do, you, do you think you do you think your position still holds um if it's true i'm not saying it is because i don't have the proof yeah yeah no that's a good good question um let me think i guess i'm i'm weighing that up like that scenario um with yeah. what we have as the alternative of like um like eating animals instead like in that system right like um yeah 
you have the system. It could be that more animals are being killed than than the amount of people being fed in the like crop system. Um, it's that, or more animals are being killed through crop protection than the amount of humans being fed on top of the amount of animals being deliberately killed for food, which is in the like trillions and billions um, on land, right? Every year. Uh, again, I'm not sure. Billions, maybe? Yeah, maybe billions. Maybe I mean, billions. I'll just, I'll, I'll throw out a number. <clears throat> Around 90 billion yeah. animals are killed each year for food. 90 billion. Yeah. Okay. So gotcha. that's kind of how I'm weighing it up. Like, um, I, I might grant, just for the sake of the argument, yeah. that um, more animals are killed in crops, crop protection, including insects. I'll include yeah. insects. Um, okay. More, like, creatures are killed to protect crops than the amount of humans being fed yeah. by those crops. But I still prefer that situation um, as much as I, like, I, I do, you know... I'd rather it be like veganic, like more, more balanced and whatnot. But that to me is a far better system than having that base amount of deaths to feeding on top of the deaths to feeding for the animals like that we eat. So the crops that are being fed to animals need to also be protected in the same way as, as humans need to be given those crops that are protected. Sorry, I, I think I'm I'm being a bit like uh, wordy. <laughs> Let me. No, 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 no. I, I, I appreciate oh. it because it helps me follow better. Yeah, I, I was, um, maybe I'm just um, so I, uh, getting I ahead of myself. It. Let me let me see if I can put it more concisely. So, let's say let's say a billion animals in crops, including insects. Let's let's just include insects. A billion like crop uh, animals and insects have to be killed to protect crops that feeds 500 million humans a year. Let's just say that. So that that's the ratio, yeah. right? I might grant that. But in the alternative system where we eat animals um, in the same crop system, um, yeah. Let's let's put the 90 billion animals number there because I have I have like a. I, I I can I can uh, confirm that's that's a real number. Um, yeah, I, I believe I believe you. I'm not, I'm not okay, okay. Animal. So ninety billion animals being fed by these same crops that feed five hundred million humans, ninety billion, and then you have uh, the so. then you have the the billion animals being killed to protect the crops that feed the ninety billion animals that are being killed for the humans. You see what I'm saying? So it's like a, it's like this kind of weird, messed up system of killing on top of killing, that yeah. <laughs> is just blatantly unnecessary, and it, it violates yeah. my my thinking. Like, man, imagine ninety billion humans being raised to be fed crops that require the killing of billions of animals, on top of just being killed in the end anyway. That just sounds okay. terrible. That's that, yeah, that's kind of how I'm tracking it. <laughs> okay. So, but in this case, I completely mm -hmm. understand your point and I appreciate it because I, it really helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing I think that we disagree on is that I believe that growing uh, animals for food mm -hmm. with the crops that we humans don't use, don't want or cannot use mm -hmm. would cause less deaths than uh just a pure vegan world where food is crops are grown purely to feed humans uh i think this is where our uh, uh, uh this is why where we differ mm -hmm. uh, there's also Maybe. the point that you said that you you don't believe that uh, crop deaths are murder while growing animals to uh to uh, kill them and eat them is mm. there's also this point that you mentioned yes uh yeah yeah okay i see what you mean yeah so, um yeah let me let me think how if, i if name, if name the trait is to be taken as facts right then the distinguish 
the distinguishment between uh, animals and non human animals is irrelevant because we're all about the rights violation. And yeah. it, if, if I can prove that in a totally vegan world, more rights, more deaths occur by creating more crops, oh, but then you don't consider that as murder, so it wouldn't matter. So, no, I mean, um, you would, you would prefer a world with more crop deaths than a world where less death and suffering occurs as long as it's not for direct food consumption. Is this correct? I mean, so are you are you putting up like the crop protection crop protection deaths up against? Oh, um, okay, let's. I'm, I was in an hypothetic world, right? I'm not saying this. This is what. The, well, I actually believe this is what occurs, but I again, I cannot prove it yet. I'll mm -hmm. be able to research it for the next couple of days and hopefully come up with something concrete. Sure. But in a in, in, for now, let's talk hypotheticals. In a hypothetical world where you have mm -hmm. two worlds, yeah, one where we grow animals to eat, mm -hmm. and the death toll is ninety million, right? Sure. That's what Every you said, year. it's yeah. the current world. Yeah. And another world where we don't grow animals to eat, and because, in my point of view, we don't reuse the wastage food, uh, the actual number of deaths... Sorry, uh, let me let me restart my, my thoughts. I, mm -hmm. I want to be precise. Yeah. So, one world, we have the 90 billion deaths that you mm -hmm. oppose, plus the crop deaths that you don't oppose. Mm -hmm. Let's say, I'm going to throw a random number out there. Let's say it's 180 billion deaths in total, right? Mm -hmm. Crop Some deaths, you mean? You don't so much. Uh, crop deaths plus uh, animal deaths. Okay. Food consumption. Sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't really matter the value. Just I'm drawing a number that is bigger than 90 as a random thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, what is it? It's, of course, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 180 billion, right? So in. Random number in one in world number one, 180 billion animals suffer and die, but only 90 billion of those only, uh, you know what I mean, uh, are from direct food consumption that you oppose. Mm -hmm. While on the second world, let's say 200 billion animals kill and suffer, are killed and suffer for crop deaths, mm. but no animals are grown to be fed directly to humans. Would you prefer the second world than the first world? Hmm. At the moment, um, my intuition is saying yes, because I can, I can immediately imagine, like, it's a, like, I will say, I'll preface that it's not, it's not an ideal world, but in the terms yes. of comparison, in terms of comparison, yeah, um, yeah, and and say the the crops are feeding the entire population in the second scenario. Yeah, you you're, you're not growing useless crops. Basically, you're growing crops for human beings. Yeah, and it's feeding the entire population. And say it's it's the same in the first scenario, but you're also feeding it to animals that. That get killed for food. Yes, for food, and but in the first scenario, less human death and suffering occur than in the second scenario. I think um, intuitively, I, I'll say yes to the second scenario because I'm imagining it in a strictly human case where, let's say, for some reason, you know. Hundreds of billions of, of humans are, are trying to steal crops that are fed to grow um, food to feed the the rest of the population. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe I, I'd have to reflect a little more on, on the, the scale at which I would be like, that's not okay. But yeah. intuitively, in principle, I would consider it fundamentally more justified to protect your crops, to feed humans. Like, that's the interest in mind than to feed humans in the first scenario and also mass slaughter 
innocent beings, like innocent uh, sentient beings. Like in, in a human scenario, if humans were being like farmed in the way animals are, and those same numbers applied, yeah, I would consider it worse to like have a systematic killing of humans um, that is being protected by killing more humans for the crops than just having those maybe the the higher number of killings in the in the second scenario but there isn't a systematic like what i consider to be like mass murder being protected even, at the end of the day even if not doing that mass murder would cause more humans to suffer and die so even if not doing the mass murder yes. Yeah, so uh, um, even if growing uh, humans for consumption, in this case, uh, would stop other billions of humans not to be killed. Because of the crop protection, right? Exactly. Um, I'd, at the moment, I'd have to say probably yes, because I, I'm like strictly yes. opposed to slavery and like the idea of, of raising humans to be slaughtered. Like I just, in principle, I, I, I oppose that stronger than protecting crops and requiring to use lethal force. That's kind of how I'm sitting now. So, I, I mean, there's probably a point where I'm not exactly sure where it is, but there's probably a point where I'd say, um, I, I don't know, maybe it's just a little beyond my, my thinking now. And that's a good, yeah. good scenario. Um, yeah. good scenario. But, um, so are you saying how, how would this relate to you in the real world? Like how would those because, kind of numbers because, relate to you? Because I believe, not in these numbers specifically, but I believe that because uh, I'm not, okay, if I'm opposed to grow uh, feed directly to feed animals, and those animals would be eaten by us, because this would increase the number of deaths and suffering, right? Mm -hmm. But I would not be opposed to animals, feds, human leftovers, or uh, non edible feed mm -hmm. that would save much more suffering and destruction because we wouldn't be, you know, polluting the uh, crop fields with pesticides, herbicides, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and this way, even the number of deaths would decrease. In my view, this is what's happening right now. Well, it's not 100% because there are some crops created to feed animals, right? And this would yeah. cause the biggest amount of suffering. Yeah. But in the real world, you mm -hmm. could feed the part of the crop that you already grew to, to animals. You could feed the parts that humans did not buy because it cannot be sold in supermarkets, you know, because it's either ugly or whatever. You mm. could feed a bunch of things that humans don't want to eat, cannot eat, or waste. You know, so much food from the supermarkets could be reused to feed animals because they're we don't feed them to humans because they're not 100% safe, but we wouldn't be opposed to feed them to animals because, you know, they have a, more, a less loose uh, definition of rights. Um, this way, you right. would reduce the number of crops that you have to create thus reducing the number of crop deaths, which are always much, much bigger than an animal uh, that could feed several people. Uh, this is why uh, I believe it, it already happens in the real world. I don't know if I explained myself correctly. Um, I, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm necessarily tracking, but I'll just see if I am. Um, yeah. So your, your position is in the real world we could um let me think just go, so that, going back to my corn example you know you plant the corn right it comes mm -hmm. up with a stem leaves cob grains uh, kernels and fluff a bunch of stuff right yeah out of that corn plant humans can only eat about 
10% of its weight, which is the kernels. They, we cannot eat the cob, we cannot eat the grass, we cannot eat the stem, we cannot eat the fluff. Sure. Uh, animals died for this corn. Mm -hmm. There's no point in now having to plant more corn to feed animals, to feed humans, sorry. But we could use the leftover that we humans don't want or, eat or cannot eat to actually feed some animals, not all of them that we are feeding right now in the real world, but some animals. And those animals would reduce crop deaths uh, by them being them slaughtered for meat. Right, this is, right. This is what I believe, this is, what I believe uh, is real in today's world. And yeah, I just don't have the numbers of how many animals this would save. Uh, but I know for a fact that uh, the WHO, I'm, I might have it in one of my videos. Um, the WHO made a graph where you can see that uh, only 7% of crops, uh, of soy crops, sorry, I think it was just soy. Uh, are actually feed directly to animals. Everything else is first used by humans, and then whatever is left over is feed to animals. That leftover is a big portion, is the majority of the soy, but the soy itself grown to directly feed animals, it's only about 7%. So if we wouldn't use the leftover soy to feed animals that would give us food, 93% of that soy would go to waste. Uh, meaning that we would have to create more crop deaths that would entail more suffering and animal deaths but, than if we would feed animals with a, that crop that was already produced. Mm. I, I think this might just be a, a case of, um, like, I, I like the empirics to um, verify what you're saying. Maybe that's... I feel like that's kind of where. Sorry, empirics means something. Oh, it's like um, uh, it's like the real world data that that you're talking about. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. Uh, I might be. If you give me two minutes, I might be able to find this graph that I was talking about. Okay. Okay. Uh, give me two minutes. I'll give it a quick try. If I cannot find it, it's fine. I'll send it to you at some other at some other point. Sure. Sure. I mean. Um, I, I, I'm sure I mentioned in the video. I can't remember which one it was. Let me see if it was this one. Right. Oh, I might have got it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So. Uh, do I have the source for this? Hmm. Oh, I might have the source point. Uh, so I found the graph. I'm just trying to see if I can find the actual source. Ah, oh, damn it. I, took, uh, I don't know if you'll find this a credible source, but well, it is from our, our, our footing data, but I don't know who created this graph. Uh, I'll send it to you, the original post. It was on Reddit on r slash vegan. Okay. Uh, I'll send you through these cords. If you can open this. So... So... Can you open it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you will see that there, for example, animal feed is... Oh, so apparently I lied. I'm sorry. It wasn't 96%. My apologies. Uh, so animal feed, 76%, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you see the graph? Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah. So if you look on the right, you will see that most of that animal feed is soybeans processed to soy cake, right? Yeah. Which is the result, those soy cakes are the result of the wastage oil production. Because the soybean is only 20% oil, right. the oil production, uh, which is 13.2, creates a lot of wastage, a lot of uh, uh, soy cake that is fed to animals. If you see on the bottom, the last red uh, uh, scripture, I guess, red writing, it says, 
soybeans fed directly to livestock, right. meaning that only seven percent of those uh, of the soy created was actually directly fed to animals, and yeah. the rest was a result of uh, it could be like beer production, tofu production, oil production, biodiesel, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so. From all the soy produced, according to our world in data, or according to this website, which I, I, I believe could be credible, you know, uh, but it's yeah. up to you. According to this data, only 7% of the soy created is actually fed to animals directly. Everything else is would be wasted. Uh, not wasted, sorry, because we do use some for oil. So uh, the rest of the 76%, I guess. So I guess 69, law. Well, uh, sixty-nine percent of the mm. soy production. Mm -hmm. uh, not ninety-three. I was lying. I apologize. So uh, sixty-nine okay. percent of the soy production would uh, not be used for any meats. It would be basically go to wastage. I've I've seen some vegans argue that oh we could feed these soy cakes for humans, but I'm not sure if that's a hundred percent truth you would have to waste a lot of energy producing something that would be human edible. And then I would have to argue against, you know, even more wasted energy production and more pollution created by it. Mm. When this soy cake is already basically here, animals just eat it and they will produce not just meat, but again, amazing things such as uh, uh, clothes or uh, uh, medicine. Uh, there's so many uses for... Uh, all these animal uh, uh, byproducts. Mm -hmm. So, in my worldview, yeah. I think that not you not raising animals with the feeds that would go to waste would create more death and suffering. But it would not create what you say is not murder because uh, it would create more crop deaths, but it wouldn't create. But it, sorry. A, a totally vegan world would create more crop deaths, in my view, rather than a non-vegan world. In the world, would create what you call more murdering of animals. Mm. Um. Oh, I don't know if that myself. Yeah. I think that. Oh, amazing! My dog just barked in my face. Um. With the graph, I actually like the graph because that kind of gives me a clear visualization of like what we're talking yeah. about. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, I see the soybeans directed directly to livestock, 7%. The animal feed, 76%. Yeah. So, I, I think I'd probably agree, like, if, if the soy cake wasn't fed to animals in the scale that we have right now, um, yeah. it would probably, probably go to waste, right? Because... Say I'll just I'll just grant that the soy cake and all that isn't actually usable besides being fed to animals, right? I, I, I mean, that's not entirely true. That's not entirely true. You 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 could technically use it to feed humans, but you have to reprocess it, and uh, oh. there would be a lot of extra energy uh, input to create something that would be human edible. So it's not like right. us humans would not be able to eat it. You you could create, for example, uh, soy protein powders out of it, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. it's not like it would be a complete waste. But I would question the ethics of, oh, we have to force people to eat this, otherwise it's going to go to waste. Or we can feed it to animals that will happily eat it. Mm -hmm. and then, um... then I have other conundrums. I have questioned the the ethics of forcing people to eat something that they don't want and uh, the actual energy and actual pollution created in order to create these products. Mm -hmm. I, I think my main, my main thing like that I'm thinking right now is the 76% animal feed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hang on, let me think. I, I probably have to, um, I'm not actually super, um, I don't know, 
I'm not <laughs> I'm not super like uh, versed in the technicalities of of crop production. Um, yep. So the the empirics are a little bit um, like I'm not familiar with them, so I I'm not actually sure I can um, like talk about them fluently, right? Um, yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, you know, it's something I you probably never seen before, so I, I don't expect you to be to have a, a an opinion right now. So I think I think my my thing right now is. To me, it's still obviously something I'm opposed to if I were to, um, like this, this waste production, right? And say, I mean, if I'm imagining, like, do I actually think it's, it's wrong to, um, not have these waste products and all that, assuming the same scale we have, um, of, of people, of animals being raised and all that. Cause I think the. The actual absolute numbers of amount of waste we'd make would probably change if we were feeding the entire population crops directly as opposed to um 20 percent okay. being fed directly to humans you know what i mean um that's something i see is like it's 20 percent direct human food and the 76 is for animal feed so yeah if we I'm just imagining if we reduce the animal feed to zero percent because we wouldn't have the animals anymore, we yeah. then um let's just add the soybeans fed directly to livestock to twenty seven percent right for human food. You'd have to figure out probably the um like the percentage of the waste that is made right now to be made to animal feed how we could use that uh, waste for the total human population. Um, but I don't know the ratio of the human population to, to animals right now, yeah. like on land, you know what I mean? I feel like there's some, uh, I think I, I, think I see, I think, I think I see your point. So basically, let me see if I can, if I read this correctly, mm -hmm. uh, you first, you could add the soy that is fed directly to livestock to human food. So it would mm -hmm. be, it wouldn't be exactly 27% because, you know, uh, creating tofu and creating other uh, soy byproducts creates wastage, but for the sake of argument, let's say 27%, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, for example, the 27% also includes uh, soybean oil. Yeah. And like I said, soybean oil is only a, a, go a good soy uh, uh, fruit, I guess. I'm not sure what is it. Is it the green? Uh, soybean. A good soy... Beans. Thank you, bean. I'm, I'm it, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, a, a good soybean will have like maximum twenty percent oil, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so eighty percent of that is already wastage. So uh, if thirty point two is uh, oil, example, that uh, no mathematics. At least I want to say. Triple that, triple that percentage maybe, would be uh, soy byproduct of this oil. So it would be again that soy protein that is basically soy cake. Mm. And not to mention all the soy byproducts created by you know because you don't eat really you don't really eat soybeans on their own, right? You eat mm. them with something else. I guess in the case of natto, you actually eat the soybeans. Uh, and you could eat the beans, I guess. So yeah, but the the creation of tofu and soy milk, and that, especially soy milk, there's a lot of byproduct that comes about that you mm -hmm. would have to force fed to humans. I guess force feeding is a strong word, but if humans don't want it and they were like, oh, I would rather buy lettuce or I'd rather buy tomatoes than eat that, mm -hmm. like no, 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 you have to eat it. Otherwise, it's going to go to waste and create more crop deaths. Would that be acceptable? Forcing people to eat something that they don't want because otherwise more deaths and suffering occur? Mm. Um, I mean, we force lots of things on people to protect others, right? Like, we're forced to not... Like, if someone wants to, I don't know, do something horrible, like like rape someone, like we force them to not rape yeah, them yeah. because, you know, 
<laughs> even if they really want to do it, they're, they're forced to, to not. <laughs> so I, I feel like... Yes. I feel like that's so okay. Yes, you would you'd be, be okay with that. Yeah, I mean, if the consequence was... Um, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like okay. that's kind of how I'm sitting. Like, uh, yeah, we... I don't think there's, there's something particularly wrong with forcing someone to do something in the best interest of, of an innocent subject. Someone else. Okay. Okay. That, that logic transcribes. But I would say that then a logical uh, sequence to that would be, oh, then humans should not be eating anything that is not 100% optimized to not create the most amount of death. That's been... Vegans, for example, eating baby jam lettuce is contributing to the killing and to the rights violation of animals because baby jam lettuce doesn't really provide you with any nutrition. So you only eat it for your own personal pleasure and you would have to force everyone to eat the most optimal crops possible to reduce animal suffering. Would this, is this a logical progression from the previous point? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I think I'd have to think a little bit about that, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I don't expect us to reach so full one conclusions today. We're just, yeah, like, yeah. I, I do, I would like if you, if you're interested, because we have the, let's just, yeah. I mean, we could use the, our world and data, like as a baseline for what I'd like to do. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't have to believe 100% what it says, just yeah. as a basis, it's fine. So, kind of bringing it back to name, to name the trait, because uh, this is like, yeah, yeah, it's like a useful way, I yeah, think, to, should. yeah, to explore this. Um, how do you feel yeah, about name the trait right now? Like, um, do you still think it's like, I, illogical? I still have the same issue with name the trait being illogical, which is, uh, I understand the philosophy of, oh, at some point, could you really tell if someone is human or not? And would it be okay to eat and kill that person for food, right? I understand the logical argument, right? Uh, I think uh, your example of the sliders is absolutely amazing. At what <laughs> point did that slider that you take away, like, uh, do you know Dark Souls? Yeah, yeah. You're familiar? They have something called humanity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you could adjust the whole humanity of your character, like you said, in a slider, at what point does that uh, human is no longer human, lo loses his humanity completely, and therefore would be okay to violate his rights, right? It will be okay to... I understand the logic behind it. I just think it's illogical... Mm -hmm. Because in the real world, there is no such slider. There is no such comparison. It all You know that humans exist. You know that something that is not human exists. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there is no possible... But you know, it's the same thing between, I guess, uh, uh, going back again... Uh, Mm -hmm. the risk of something repetitive again the name the, the the ship of Theseus. at some point you take so many planks out of that ship that it's not really a ship anymore however at which plank is not a ship anymore you could argue that there are there are there are no humans there are no ships there are no uh, you were just atoms floating around you know we it all these these concepts only exist in our minds, you know, like for example, the age of drinking. Giving alcohol to a six-year-old is morally wrong, right? Because it causes them damage. But giving alcohol to a friend who's 23, 24, uh, 30, it's fine. You're being a nice person. And I can ask, okay, which date, which date was, did it stop being immoral and it start being moral? You, no one would be able to tell me a specific date, hour, or second. We just determine randomly that it's, depending on the country, 16, 18, 21, 25. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, could it is someone an adult. 
Yes. Could I maybe stop stop your train of thought? Because I, I think I understand. Yes, 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 go for it. I understand your point of like it is it gets very um it gets quite arbitrary. Like I see exactly what you're saying with the alcohol, like it, <laughs> like is is a is a kid an adult like when it's like <laughs> twelve AM on their birthday and now they're an adult, so it's okay exactly. to drink. <laughs> exactly. Like that that is very like weird that. and it it might it might come down to that, but I think the the importance of evaluating the like the arbit like the arbitrary nature of um of things like that is when there's um like moral stakes at hand i think it becomes important and less less ridiculous to to evaluate so yeah. could i maybe press you a little bit on on them to trade and i can maybe try and guide it to make it less um yeah, yeah, yeah. less ridiculous so so, so um, I remember in your video, you said being human was a trait you would answer name the trait with, right? Um, uh, it's a bit weak because I follow it up by saying being human is not a trait, is an agglomerate of traits. Mm -hmm. right? that, that's totally fine. Like, um, you know, I, I, I like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I immediately say that being human is not really a trait. So it's not a correct answer to that question because yeah. I refute the premise of the question which is you can determine when something is human or not right i mean maybe we can we can maybe i can help like explore where like if we can just go through it and and maybe explore where you might find a line or or not so when i hear being human i don't think of one trait like myself i think of a an accumulation of traits right like um i don't know looking looking somewhat like a human or something like whatever you think of when you think of the traits of being human that's fine like there's a yeah. there's a bunch so let's let's break it down so like i mean we got like genetically for example like having human dna could be a trait right yeah so imagine imagine a like a a human like being um and we can go yeah. into i mean i think aliens and that kind of thing makes it easy so um yeah, yeah let's go ahead. let's imagine like a human looks very much just yeah. like a human but for some reason you you check their dna you like scan their dna and yeah. they are a vulcan you know from star trek <laughs> so for some reason they look exactly like a human but they happen to just be a vulcan so they're not human would you consider it okay just this one person this one vulcan would you consider it okay to to kill and eat them for food okay so i also tried to address this question on my video and i mentioned mm -hmm. something on the lines of uh if an uh, if uh if a visitor from another planet in this case a vulcan looks human thinks and speaks human but it, the dna is vulcan right mm. uh would I consider killing it? So the, if I would simplify the question to its basic elements, you are asking me, oh, what if you saw a human that it wasn't human? So like, okay, what are you asking me? What if I saw well, a human that wasn't human? So, okay, so what did I see then? Is it human or not? If it's human, it deserves human rights. If it's not human, it does not deserve human rights. But does that mean that I should be killing it and eating it? No, not automatically. But as a society, we would happily discuss mm. it and see if this person is indeed more, more, uh, morally entitled to the right of not being killed and eaten. I just, I just don't like that question because in it, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, in its basic mm. form, you're asking me a non-question, which is, what if you see something that is not something? I'm like okay that doesn't make a lot of sense at least not in my mind mm. i give an example of oh can you determine the area of a triangle square mm, yeah I, I i think i understand uh why why it comes off as weird yeah i, I would just push guide me and see what am i doing wrong yeah i might just say um like with with like finding the area of a, a triangle square like that's very much like a, a logical there's no um there's a logical contradiction there in that example yes that makes it impossible logically impossible but exactly 
I don't see what what might be the yeah I mean what might be the contradiction in imagining a human like figure like just for some they have the external yeah. appearance of a human but they are actually just a Vulcan like what is the contradiction yes. there the contradiction is that it boils down to asking me okay you saw something that uh, looks like a human, but it's mm. not a human, right? And in this yeah. case, the trait missing, it's the DNA, right? Yeah. But we both agree that being human is not just about the DNA. If someone was born and their DNA was slightly different, that doesn't mean we can eat them, right? Uh, you're basically asking me to remove mm. one trait from a human and determine if that person can now be eaten or not. Oh, well, yeah, I, no, yes. Again, I mean, I'm asking yeah. just for one trait because I'm trying to figure out what the traits are that matter yeah, to I, you. I so it's not like it's not bad that you say no, but um, there might just be other traits you care about that I'm trying to explore. That's okay, all. So maybe maybe that that it's the that's the point where uh, we don't agree, or at least we're not. I think we're speaking past each other because I believe. All traits are important, but no single trait is. That's what I mean as well with the shape of Theseus. The whole boat is important, but no single plank is. So you can tell me, oh, okay, let's remove this trait. Is it still a, a ship? I was like, yeah, it's still, let, it's still a ship. Okay, let's remove this other trait or plank. Is it still a ship? Yes. And what about this one? Yes. What about this one? At some point, it won't be anymore. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be able to tell you... At what point of removing traits, it's not human anymore, and it wouldn't be deserved the rights. Like, is uh, if I if I take a bunch of human cells uh, outside of the uh, in a petri dish, for example, do they deserve human rights? Probably not. No, I know. Uh, but why? Which which traits are missing from those human cells? Well, a bunch of them, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably, if if I have to, if you would tell me. Well, which one would it be? I'll be very hard pressed to name a single one, you know, because yeah, is it consciousness or potential consciousness. Because a person that is asleep is not conscious. Do they deserve human rights? Yes. Even a person who's dead, we do not appreciate people killing, uh, eating it. You know what I mean? Unless in extreme cases, you know. Unfortunately, it has happened throughout history. Yeah. Again, it's bad. The person is dead. It's just a right at that point. It's just a, a a big mass of human cells in the shape of a human, but it's it's no longer a conscious human. Mm -hmm. so Look, can I can I straight would be yes. Can I share with you? Um, no, it's okay. I I I do understand. Like, I I I don't mean to say that you only care about one trait you might very well okay. care about multiple. That's like, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I would I just, care about all of them. can I, can I share with you some, some stuff to do with name the trait? Yeah. Just yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. these two PDFs, right? I don't know if you've seen them, yeah. but these are like the most, so there's a name the trait dialogue flow, which is kind of like, it's kind of like what it's like a linear way of asking to name the trait, right? but it's in a yes or no format. And then there's the deduction tree, which is if you, um, like where you're saying you kind of can't necessarily tell you, you can't necessarily tell me where you would draw the line. Um, there's an argument to be made that um, if you do agree that there's some set of differences between say a human and an, and an animal, um, there, are, there are a list of differences but you can't necessarily point out where it is that it matters morally, um, like where one's okay to kill and the other one is not to eat. Then, okay. sorry, which one, which, which one should I open? By the way, so three or the five? Maybe just open both. Um, if it's totally new, then I wouldn't ask you to like give me your thoughts on it immediately. But I'd love for you to to uh, have a look at that. One hundred percent. It's one hundred percent new to me. Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't. Okay, no, no, it's fine. Like I feel like. I would love to, um, this is honestly, I don't know how long we've been talking, but this has been a really nice, oh, we've been talking for an hour I'm 50. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. If you can continue, I'll be more than happy to go on for a little longer. Hey, I feel like, um, 
I would love to pick this up with you in a in another time yeah. and 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 follow up yeah. on what you think about name the trait because we talked yeah, a lot right. about like crop totally. deaths and like the ethics of that which i thought was really cool yeah. and um i think we ended up deviating too much from name the traits i'll be honest <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean we did deviate we we went on to um yeah. like crop deaths a lot but i feel like cool. if we can make another time to talk and maybe if you take a look at that stuff i'd love to talk to you about about name the trait more specifically and then we can like have a more like um narrowed down like discussion about it because i i think one okay. of the you know what i mean like, i mean how does that sound I'll, I'll ask you i'll ask you a favor though okay mm -hmm. the thing about name the trait is that for me i reject the question right i will now look into it a bit more deeply and see if the question has value on its own, right? Mm -hmm. Because right now I'm saying like, right now my position is the question has no value. It's completely ridiculous. Not because it doesn't work, but because the premise is, is, of it is wrong. Okay. If I look at it a bit deeper, maybe I'll be able to see what you see in its value. And yeah. I'll be able to, okay, maybe I shouldn't refute the fact that the question is nonsensical, but maybe there is something in it that is indeed true or would lead to something that it is true. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could ask you a big favor, is that is there as well something that I can either listen or uh, view? Yeah. Because I spend a lot of time in transportation, and usually this is what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather, I just like listen to something. I I can't really focus on something like reading wise because I get seasick. Mm -hmm. If there are any videos that you would recommend or podcasts, I would greatly appreciate it if you share it with me because that would be a better way for me to uh, uh, hold information, let's say. Yeah. So to do with name the trait? Yeah. With the yes, 100%. I can send you, I'll send you a video of, um, yeah. it's, of I, it's of Ask Yourself specifically explaining the dialogue tree and the, the deduction tree that I gave you. Um, yeah. Uh, I might make my own video. Wait, sorry. I think I remember watching some video with this sentence. I don't know if it was uh, Ask Yourself or someone talking about Ask Yourself, but this thing about on your current moral view, if all traits true of a given human who has moral value, etc., etc. I think I've seen this question somewhere. It, it's okay. ringing a bell, at least. Okay, well, so, yeah, that is... That's pretty, yeah. That's pretty much like what, what he talks about because that that's part of the dialogue yeah um Posting and hoping that they're together. but yeah um i feel like i i mean if you have seen that then maybe maybe that's just it but i feel like i would like to make my own video like explaining explaining it in a way that isn't super technical but i'd, I'd have to like <laughs> write it out and that kind of thing it's yeah. kind of hard to explain on yeah. off the cuff you know um yeah but like, I'll send you this video because you might, you might consider that um, useful. Bes besides yeah, just looking at the PDFs, I think. Um, just, I just, think it's just you know it's more interesting to watch stuff rather than just like look at actual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Could would you be interested in in picking this up a, another time and yeah, one hundred percent, bro. I'm I'm enjoying a lot your your reasoning. I'm enjoying a lot the way you speak. You know, hmm. because these these other you know, I, I've tried to watch others like Nutrivore or Ask Yourself, etc. Yeah, and they're they're the way they speak, bro. I get lost in the first two minutes. I, I swear, it's just I don't know. It's you know, I don't know if it's mm -hmm. because English is my uh, third language mm -hmm. or if it's because we simply are already in a level in terms of discussion. I just I, I just can't follow it and I cannot be bothered to, you know? Yeah. So I would definitely be interested in picking this up again with you. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, for sure. I and, and, and I'll, Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I totally understand. I understand what you're saying about tracking, like, what they're talking about and, like, how they speak. Because they have a very... Um, yeah. They have a very... Um, like they're very like invested in, I swear. yeah, like their terminology that they use and like there's some, yeah, for sure. I understand. <laughs> they, they talk in a complex way that is hard to follow. Um, yeah. 
And even I, for me, I, I listen the word. You know, I listen to the words and I understand the words, but I don't understand what they're saying. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. I do. Um. So yeah. At least next time, I will try not to steer the conversation too much into other topics. It will stay on the name the trade thing. Mm. Uh, I mean, th this wasn't like a formal time. debate or anything, so it's okay. Um, I was happy to okay. to I, talk I about it. it. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, I, I think you you made some uh, points that I definitely could could agree with. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of vegans see me, you know, attacking veganism and they automatically assume that I am, for some reason, uh, happy with it. You know, animal suffering. I'm not. I wish there was a better way, but, you know, it's, oh. it's, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Plus, YouTube is very, you need to be more aggressive if, if you want to get views. And I hate that, you know, my, yeah. my more thought, thought out videos are the ones with least views. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. No, I'll say this, like, I, I really respect um, your willingness to engage. That's something I, that's something I've come to respect a lot, is like, just yeah. being willing to talk. Yeah. I have a video titled, like, uh, Do Not Debate Vegans, right? And you you will see it's, it's a clickbait title. Because the examples that I give, uh, man, I'm sorry, like, with absolutely batshit crazy examples, right? Like with no complete rationality, right? Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm more than happy to learn. I'm more, I'm more than happy to be humble than to be proven wrong. I've been wrong in the past. I might be wrong mm -hmm. now, you know? Mm. At the moment, I don't see it. But yeah, I, I know that I can be wrong. And I, I really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, invest in, in, in me a bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I definitely appreciate you a lot, man. Oh, look, I really appreciate you talking with me as well. It's, I love uh, discussing stuff about veganism and it doesn't have to be like a formal debate. Um, that's just like, it's a way to keep it on track though. Like formal debates, I, I've seen enough to, like if you, um, like there's merits to just having a free flowing conversation and also having like a, a clear topic like a proposition that yeah. that is just on the <laughs> Macy. Um, yeah. I th I think next time we should try to get more on topic rather than mm -hmm. divert. Like it would, this was really fun. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. But I don't. But but yeah, we're we're gonna really be running in circles and then we don't discuss anything in specific. Yeah, I mean, so I think next time we should really try to stick with the uh, with the trade thing. Yeah, hundred percent. Beautiful. Um, look, right. it's been really good talking to you. Um, and same, same, same. same. I mean, I I'd, I'd be free. Honestly, next week I don't have a lot of because uh, I'll be going to visit some family next week. But yeah. after that, I'd have a lots of like yeah, available yeah. times. So like we could just. I mean, I guess we can just keep in touch. You know. We'll keep in touch. You have my email. I have yours. We'll we'll shoot emails from time to time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would have, I don't know if I'll have any time this week or not. Unfortunately, between the clinic and the hospital, it, 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 it goes crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, we'll shoot an email and, you know, right now it's like 1.30 a.m. here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm waking up. And I'm waking up uh, tomorrow at like 6.30 to go again to work. So it's going to be... Yeah. Well, look, I mean, uh, I thank you I, for uh, taking the time, like with that in mind no, as well. Man. <laughs> I, I really, I really, it, it's fun. I, I enjoy these things a lot. And like I said, I love to learn. And if, even if I'm proven wrong, man, then I'm wrong. I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm not proud to hold anything that I believe to be true to be true. I've been proven wrong enough times in my life to, to know that. Mm -hmm. um, but to give you a probable date mm -hmm. uh, that we can aim maybe for, yeah. Uh, I believe I'll I'll have a day off next Saturday. Oh yeah. So I will probably be pretty flex flexible around that area. I don't know if it will work exactly, but mm. we can maybe aim for that. And yeah. We'll see. For sure. I I know for and a fact the, I'll be I'll have time then as well. Yeah. So I'll uh, either you um, in the middle of the week or something. Uh, just shoot me an email and I'll be able to respond and give you a more concrete date and time. Would that be mm -hmm. okay? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, this was really, really fun and uh, I think productive. Yeah. Uh, even though we, we diverged, I feel like um, you posed some, some good questions to me. And I mean, if... Uh, and you gave me some amazing things to think about as well and to look and to study. So I appreciate the, the fact that I, I feel a little bit smarter today. You know? Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel challenged in my own way. Uh, like your hypotheticals, I think, were cool. And I mean... I, I'd like to think of myself as not like a, um, like, I don't want to be dogmatic about it as much as like, I'm yeah. super passionate about it, but I am willing to, to be challenged. That that's what I'm trying to say is like, that's why I appreciate it. Awesome. That's my goal, I guess. Yeah. If, I mean, uh, if, if you were one of the person that was dogmatic and doesn't accept anything beyond, you know. Uh, beyond their already beliefs, mm. and I, I don't think it would be a very good conversation. <laughs> no, it was really fun. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'll um, I'll probably email you or something in the week or, or something like that, and we can just yeah. start from there for can another you do time. It in the week, just to confirm if uh, uh, you can do it on Saturday, mm -hmm. and I'll email you back with a more concrete available time, and you can tell me if it works for you or not. Yeah. That sounds good. Awesome. That sounds really good. Sleep, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thanks for thanks for chatting. It's it was really good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a yeah. have a good Sunday, yeah. You too. <laughs> See you, dude. Take care. Bye-bye.